Hello, good morning. You are welcome to a new tutorial series on how to create Azure keywords in using Python and using the portal. So Azure keywords is usually important for building applications and wherever we want to make our services, that is, we want to make our application to be secure. Azure keywords usually helps with the centralization and protection of application secrets, encryption keys, and certificates. So it is very good to use an Azure keyword when you are building probably a web application and you are trying to make all your keys, certificates, and all to be secret. So we are going to show how we are going to demonstrate how we can use this Azure keyword in our code. That is, we are going to demonstrate using one of the applications that we have. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to go to the portal that is portal.azure.com. So when you get to the portal.azure.com, you go to the keywords, that is you search for keywords. Since I already searched for hit here, so that's why I'm showing it in my list of options. So I open the keywords. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to manually create a new one. The one I created is here. So for a first time user, you're going to manually create a new one. So you're going to manually create a new keyword. So this is what we're going to do. We already have our keyword options open. So we go down to the subscription. You create, you click on the resource group you want to use. Probably you have a new resource group. You can also create a new one. You scroll down and you enter the name of your resource group and the region and all. So when you're done, Let's scroll down. So you can see we have something like sub deletes this to retain um, deleted votes. Actually, how this votes is just to tell you that the days of retention for this particular vote is going to be 90 days. So you can enable a purge protection just to enforce a mandatory retention period for this particular vote. So after we are done with that, you go to the access policy. This access policy is actually good because um with the access policy the access policy whenever we, cl we click on the access policy it's just to tell you like you are trying to reference the applications you want to use this particular word for so what i'll do is i'll go to the configure that is i'll, I'll click on key and secrets management then i'll select the principal this principal is actually very important so you select the principal this at uh, this principal is where you're going to select the exact application you want to use. Probably you've been building any web application and then you're going to reference that. Probably you build an application under um, Azure Active Directory. So you're going to reference that particular application under this select principle. So after you've done that, you, give it, you click on hard. So let's go back. Okay. So since I already created mine, then you click on OK. That is to move from the, to the next tab, then you click on OK. So since I already created mine, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into our code. We're going to go into our code, that is to start using it. Since we already created, um, we already created our words, already created our key vote. that is we have the key vote name so what we are going to do now is we are going to set our secrets and everything that we are going to do so the first thing here is we need to have i'm going to do is i'll do az login here az login so after you log in i'm going to do az login so you can see it directed me down to my browser so I might just cancel it because I'm already logged in. So we let it load anyway. So what we're going to do now is, okay, I think it's still loading as well. Okay, so it's going to show me my credentials and hold just to tell me like I already logged in. So. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to install the Azure identity and other things that we need to install. So the first thing we are going to install the Azure identity, come down here, 
click on it. Then we copy it here. Then we store the Azure identity. Since I have it installed already, so I might not need all these ones. So you can see. So the second one that we're going to install is this, the Azure Keyword Secrets. So both of these has to be installed before we start, um, we start with our code. So just like I told us earlier, like we need to select the principal that is to reference the application that needs to have access to this, to this particular secret that we are creating. So those things has to be done before we move forward to in creating our secret and all. So since we already created our keyword name, we have a name for our keywords. So this the name of my keyword is here. So we're going to start coding, okay? So we're going to include all these details inside our application. That is, we're going to include it inside our code. So what we're going to do next is we're going to export, we are going to create environment variables. That is, I want to export my client ID, my tenant ID, and my um, client secret, and all this, I have to export it to my environment variables. So what I'm going to do now is, if you are exporting to environment variables using Windows, you are going to use sets, while if you are using Linux machines, export. So what we're going to do next is export. So here now I'm going to use sets, client ID. Since I already set them, I have them in my environment variable, so I won't be doing that multiple times. So you do, do it in this form, that is you use set, client ID, then you copy your client ID here. So the client ID will usually be the client ID of that application you want to use. And if it's the client secret, also will be the that of the application you want to use. So those are the values we're going to use. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go straight into our code. Okay. So we import the OS, that is, we import our OS so to be able to use the environment variables. So we import from Azure.keyword Keywords the secrets secrets so we import from Azure dot keywords the secrets imports clients from Azure. Identity and clients credential. So now we've import all these libraries because those are the other two other library that we're going to make use of. So we're going to go to the next thing we create, we bring in our we're going to bring in one of our environment variables, that is the keyword name that we already had in our environment variable. Okay. And we also had the other environment variables. Okay, for the client ID, let's just copy what we have here. Okay, client secrets. Tenant ID, that is the, what I already added under my environment variables. So, keyboard name, client ID, secrets, tenant ID. So, let me change the name of these ones. So, client ID. Client secrets and on ID. Okay. 
So the next thing now is we're going to create a key URI. This key URI is just like a, um, I've been trying to create a link to the azure.net using our keyboard name. So we're going to do, going to write something like this, key URI equal to, and we use the HTTPS, the keyboard name, okay, the keyboard name, our boot, dot bolt dot net dot net okay so I think let me add a uh, a so next to now is we create our credentials these credentials actually this credential actually link to um what we already created that is the credentials to one of our applications probably the one in azure active directory so the one i'll be making use of here now is the one of my applications which i have in azure directory so this application is going to be making use of this secret so i'm going to use this So what I will do now is I'm going to use the client. I'm going to make use of this library. The client secret credential library. And I do, I had my client ID that is all my client ID that is, that is coming from my, okay. That's coming from the environment variable, client secrets. Okay. So, and the tenant ID. So after then, we are not going to make use of the secret client library. So this secret client library, we are going to pass a key URI and the client secret credentials along with it. Secret client library, then we use the vault URL is equal to then the uh, key URI, then comma, then the credential, then we pass in our credentials. All right, so we already make use of the secret client library, that is, we already putting the um, key boss name, instantiation, and the credentials that is from our Azure Active Directory to one of our applications right there. So what we're going to do next now is we're going to create a new secret using the secrets, that is using this secret client library that we have here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set our new secrets. So to set our new secrets now, we're going to do something like this. New secrets is equal to use the secrets. We're going to make use of the method that we that is usually known as set secrets. The secret does set secrets. So when we are setting our secrets, we need to set the secret name and the secret value. So I'm going to set in a secret name here. Let me say my secret name is equal to username. My secret value is equal to let's say password. No, no, no. let's use um, secret value maybe six seven and hash. Okay. So here I'm going to pass in the secret name and the secret value. So 
Okay, so now we already set our secret. So what we're going to do now is we're going to retrieve the same secret that we set from here. So to retrieve secrets, the method usually use is known as get secret. So let's do set is equal to secrets.get secrets. We put in the secret name. So we're going to pass in our secret name that we defined here. So we pass in the secret name to get our volume. So it's just like I want to use this same volume inside any of my application. So I'm just going to pass in the name that I used to set the secret. So in order to get the volume for me to be able to use it inside any of my code. So okay, we use the secret dot get secrets. This is going to be secrets. This is coming from here. It's coming from the secrets. So secret that gets secret, then the secret name and the value. So now we are going to print in the value. So if this goes or uh, if this was able to print the value for us, that means our secret has been set and we can also verify from our Azure, from our portal. So let's check. We made a mistake here. It should be azure.net. I guess this is why it's bringing up this error. Okay, so we can see her secret value has been set. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to verify this from our portal page. So we open the secret page. You can see username has been set. So this is one, um, I have this password already. So whenever I open the username, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and that is the value of it should be there. You can also create a secret here. And if we just click on generate, then we enter the name and value just like what we did the other time. So this we also manually create a secret for us. So this is just like a way of creating this on the portal rather than using the Python way of creating the secret. So with this that we have here, we can also get this secret that is this particular password that I have here just by going back to my code, just by going back to my code and I use get secret, then I put the password and then dot value. So definitely I'm going to get the value of that particular secret. Any of this, this is a very good way of um keeping all our credentials and all whether we don't need to expose them inside our code so we can use this as a vault in setting up our keys secrets and all using python or using any other libraries that you want to or any other programming language that you want to use so thank you very much for coming to this tutorial we'd love to see you next time